This is a bumper sticker lecture on the cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. By that I mean it's a very abbreviated version of the discussion that we would have in a face-to-face -face classroom. It's just intended to give you some topics to think about and perhaps to research or to discuss in the forum as you see fit. The first point I want to address is that of foreshadowing. This story is a uh, uh, master of foreshadowing. There are many hints or clues as to um, the end of the story. Obvious ones include the vow of revenge in the beginning, uh, but also there are other things throughout, like the um, coat of arms, the motto, uh, the reference to illness, and the fact that they are in a catacombs where dead would be buried. Another point you might want to think about is the single effect theory. This is a theory of Poe's. He was one of an early, uh, one of the early literary critics for the American short story, and he talks about the single effect. He talks about single effect and not much about meaning, yet there is a lot of meaning to be found on any, um, in any Poe's story. Another thing to consider from this story is the point of view. Because it's first person, we're always asking ourselves whether we find the narrator reliable. Now, I think we're supposed to assume this all actually happened, and he's reliable in that way. But when he claims to be so happy about it and so victorious, I think he might be dissembling a bit. He does give us some hints that he feels guilt or remorse, including toward the end, uh, for a brief moment, I hesitated, I trembled, including the, the line, I struggled with its weight, and my heart grew sick. All of these things to me suggest that maybe there is more guilt than he is letting on. The mythological critics would focus on the revenge theme. The mythological critics look at themes and ideas that are repeated throughout a lot of literature throughout the ages and um, from place to place. And revenge is one idea that we see everywhere. Lawrence calls uh, Poe's tale uh, the lust of hate. And this hate, this revenge, um, becomes very important to our understanding of the story. If you think that the character Montressor does feel guilt uh, about, his, about his actions, then one can see that this is a story about how revenge does not work. And as D.H. As Lawrence says, the victor breaks the bonds of his own identity and collapses into nothingness. Finally, I want to think about setting. Uh, setting is obviously important in you know, the literal sense, but also it's important symbolically. In this case, we are in the catacombs, which of course is where dead would be buried, but also it's uh, symbolic of all this beneath the consciousness stuff that we see in Poe, that secret um, spirit of perverseness that Poe talked about. And everything is, is, is buried there within, within Montressor. Also, the setting really becomes important if we want to look at the motivation of the characters. Um, in this case, it can be seen, the story can be seen as a uh, uh, just a story of personal revenge, uh, uh, some, some kind of jealousy. But I think it's also, um, it also can be seen as a, a, an example of the conflict between Catholics and Freemasons. As an aristocrat, Montressor would clearly be a Catholic, and um, the, the line in the story about the, the sign, you are not of the Masons, that implies that Fortunato is a Freemason. That means that, that uh, Mark Fortunato is of the middle class and would have been rising in power. We have other evidence of that in the story as well. This also means that the uh, uh, aristocracy is losing power. And so what this might mean is that Fortunato actually did nothing to Montressor, but that instead he becomes a scapegoat for the fall of the Montressor family.